This is actually the, the clue to the symmetry of human heart muscle. Many of you have heard me tell the story before. The layers of the human heart muscle on the outside are the axial spin symmetries of the tetra. That's why seven layers discreetly dissectable as in Pettigrew's work in um, vortex of light fields of form. <clears throat> Whereas in the center of the heart, you have the, the pent symmetry. This is the projector. This is the container. And that is the archetype of that slip knot. And that's why we see that Gordian knot, Anu, identically at the center of hydrogen, at the center of human heart muscle, and as clairvoyantly seen at the heart of the sun, and as we'll later learn if we have time, that the, set, the hydrogen's braid symmetries, I'm sorry, the DNA's braid symmetries are done exactly that way. <laughs> Actually, you see the thread inside DNA has five spins, and then that thread is braided seven times recursively as it thickens, and that's the slipknot when the DNA becomes toroidal and you have the 12 superposed axes of rotation, not 12 threads in DNA, and you actually have the whole turning inside of phenomenon. Okay, that's as much as we're gonna do about the background. I just wanted to give you a little flavor for how beautiful hydrogen is. Bring your mic up. Okay. Thank you. Get my microphone aligned. Thank you for aligning me, Paul. That's good. So now we're going to apply this. Mm. So let's look at hydrogen technologies. Now, in our project, we said that we could reinvent hydrogen energy sources by understanding the fractal implosive nature of hydrogen. For example, when I took the Planck length times golden ratio precisely to get the three radii of hydrogen precisely in the equation I was lucky enough to find, as described on the web at goldenmean.info slash goldenproof. I did one more thing. I took the Planck time constant, the unit of time corresponding to the unit of length, which physics considers sacred because it divides evenly into everything in physics. For example, you take Planck time times golden ratio precisely and get the solar year. I invented that equation. Uh, and you can also take the Planck time times golden ratio precisely and get the Venus year. And you can take the Planck time times golden ratio precisely and get the splitting frequencies of hydrogen. <laughs> the hydrogen frequencies that we put at goldenmean.info slash goldenproof, the physics of the origin of coincidence at goldenbean.info slash coincidence. So time is a name for charge rotating. That periodicity of rotating charge defines time, and the inertia of that rotating charge defines mass. So rotating charge is pretty much the only thing physics has to discuss here. <laughs> now, um, because, well, and I need to tell you one more thing. I took precisely the wavelength of Planck times golden ratio from which I derived hydrogen to create the frequency recipe, which I'm going to tell you about tomorrow, where we created 50% change in fermentation. So this is absolutely central to the structure of all of matter, is to understand Planck times golden ratio, both in time and in space. Specifically, I can say to you, I'm absolutely convinced that the only way any wave system can emerge from chaos is fractality both in time and space. Do you see when we're talking about coincidence that for charge to be transferred between rotating systems, the physics of coincidence, if you will, golden mean ratio would idealize that charge transfer, the fractality in time. And we did more on the golden ratio in time in the Mayan calendar. It's all at golden mean that info slash coincidence. So, we have new information to calculate the critical frequencies of hydrogen. Now, when I told you about Planck time times golden mean ratio, Planck time times golden mean ratio times phi, I derived an equation that I was lucky enough to discover the splitting frequency of hydrogen originally invented by this guy, Kansius. 
So now I believe that the Kansas, some of you are familiar with Kansas, he's made very famous by a professor that Dr. Flanagan was speaking about, Rustam Roy, one of the world's more famous scientists, University of Pennsylvania. He adopted Mr. Kansas's work on the splitting of hydrogen. Now, we firmly believe that using this new frequency recipe, because when Kansas discovered this, he didn't understand the origin of his frequency recipe. He tripped over it. It's the palladium sputtering frequency. It turned out to be key to splitting hydrogen. But now I have a direct derivation of the critical frequencies straight from the pure principles of physics. So I strongly believe we're now in a position to idealize the Kansas process of splitting hydrogen because we now know not just one harmonic, but how to derive the whole cascade to make the electric field to split hydrogen. And in a parallel discussion, the, another of the hydrogen projects that we have had alliance with is called the Anubis Project which is described in some extent on the website BreakthroughTechnologies.com and FractalField.com. The Anubis project was triggered by another old friend. How many of you here have heard of Andrea Puharik? Andrea Puharik, <laughs> right, very famous uh, story of the nine Aquarian conspiracy, really famous guy and old friend. And uh, sort of a long story, but he discovered a recipe for the critical frequencies for splitting hydrogen, and we don't have time now, but on the website, you can actually see the film of hydrogen bubbling out of water in electrolysis with extremely low power, based again on the critical frequency recipes of hydrogen. And what we now know from this is that we could optimize that frequency recipe as well. So we have the theoretical basis now to perfect the splitting of hydrogen using frequency ratios. The frequency ratio is a complement to the symmetry operation. So now let's talk about uh, the Joe cell. Let's do that one next. Remember we showed you pictures earlier, and there are many on the web, of the concentric cans, the rings of hydrogen from the Joe cell. And we looked at a few of those earlier. Let's just uh, play a couple of those again. Remember we talked about that since we now know the principle behind what's making the hydrogen atom stable in the monoatom state, I mean, the problem is analogous to what Pat Flanagan was talking about in terms of surface tension. In water, surface tension goes down when the molecules are more willing to live by themselves, <laughs> that is to say, be stable as a monoatom or monomolecule. In exactly the same way, the gold powder will turn inside out like popcorn, turn white, and become mono or means the spice in a fractal capacitor, the origin of Holy Communion. So that gold atom became stable as a monoatom in an electric field that was implosive and thus triggered the atom to implode and turn inside out and be stable as a single atom. Now, that's going to be directly what we discuss tomorrow when I show you phase conjugate magnetics. I'm going to show you how the light poles of a magnet attract. And I'm going to show you the angle of the magnetic flux lines between them, which is this same picture, how two cones approach each other perfectly. And then we'll show you, Sal's going to show you more detail on the 300% effect we measured on growth when we passed water through that magnetic field. The reason I bring that up at this moment is, if you study the literature, the effect of strong magnetic fields on water has been studied for years. And there's been previous studies that show some growth effect, and I think Sal actually helped point that out to me on one occasion. One of the key mechanisms which has been hypothesized to account for why a strong magnetic field of the pro proper implosive symmetry heals water is because the water becomes um, stable in smaller microclusters. In other words, instead of long chains of water molecules, suddenly now the water molecule is able to live in a very small cluster, just like Pat Flanagan was showing you the micro particles. 
And when water molecules can be stable in smaller clusters, you know what happens? 